Howdy folks, Tex Grebner here with Tex Grebner Outdoors. I hope you guys are ready to make it weird because it is Illinois Archery Season 2018, week number 6. And that means that it's time for your Tex Grebner Outdoors Saturday Morning Cartoon Awesomeness. Now if you want to support the channel in a way that is beyond simply watching the videos, you can check out TexGrebnerOutdoors.com for all your Tex Grebner Outdoors merchandise needs. We have the Make It Weird t-shirt and Make It Weird sticker. And we have the hashtag Kill With Sticks shirt. So, there's that. And, I don't believe in e-bagging on Patreon. So if you invest in Tex Grebner Outdoors merchandise, at least you have something functional, even if it's just to wipe your ass within the woods. And quite frankly, it has always seemed to me that closed seat trousers, namely pants, are an invention as a result of modern plumbing practices because if you think about it, the Native American style breech cloth and leggings combination really is an excellent way of dealing with having to pop a squat in the woods. You can also check out and refill your Three Rivers Archery supplies with the discount code of Tex Grebner. That, along with all the other social media links, will be posted down in the description. I hope you guys are ready for your Tex Grebner Outdoor Saturday Morning Cartoon Awesomeness, because it's going to be a crazy week of deer hunting. As I sit in a deer stand, I often think about all the missed opportunities of my past as a hunter. All the shots that I haven't taken and all the properties that I no longer have access to because of relatives that have gotten older to where they could hunt or changing ownership of property or even in some cases fallouts with the property owners for mistakes that I didn't make on their land. And so while I know a lot about where to hunt on other people's property, I find myself coming back home as a prodigal son of my own family's property because it's all that I have access to other than some puny public land about 15 miles away. So I didn't have high hopes for this hunt, but after we got done cleaning out the combine with compressed air, I figured, what the hell? Might as well go hunting. What's the worst that can happen? I'll go home empty-handed. Might as well see what's going on at this stand. And I also found out what was wrong with my cameras when I inspected my remote wire. At some point, while I wasn't paying attention in my stand to my camera, a squirrel had chewed on my camera cord for my remote. And so I have managed to get it to work by wrapping it tightly with electrical tape to keep the shorting out section tight. But I did order another piece, and I suppose that I should be good that the little furry bastard didn't chew on my road mic cable instead of just a $10 cord. I had a good feeling about this hunt. Everything was perfect. The wind, the weather, the timing the time of year, everything just so absolutely perfect. And I was excited as I sat in my stand. And then of course it rapidly became a comedy of errors when a young buck was in the thick brush and I was frantically trying to position the camera for the ambush. And then of course a train whistle spooked the buck and sent him away. And I figured that the night was blown so I took the time and repositioned my stand and my camera arm. And as I was hanging off the tree, damned if a doe isn't standing down in my food plot, just watching, and then calmly trots away. So I got back up into my stand and sat it out the rest of the night. Ah, oh boy, it's Tex Grebner Outdoors. Well, I am putting in some tree screws. I'm moving a stand. I'm going to fix them.
we go. And now it's time to slip and slide and crawl my way up the muddy ass hill. It's very difficult to set up a stand after dark, not necessarily because you're doing it in the dark because, you know, I use a headlamp, but it's difficult to make sure that you get it set up properly because of your limited range of vision to make sure that you get your shooting lane set up properly and the positioning of your stand all proper. Of course, I didn't get a chance to hunt yesterday because it was raining sideways and I figured that not only would it be miserable, but I'd hate to have an animal that I couldn't find because the rain washed out the blood trail. And I had other stuff that I needed to do today, so thanks to daylight savings time, I didn't get into my stand until an hour before dusk and of course the deer were already on the move and I busted two of them on my way to this stand so naturally this is Tex Grebner Outdoors and you can count on things not going right no sooner was I in the stand than the rain started but I decided that I was gonna sit it out till dark It was an overcast night, not quite bitterly cold and just a little bit of wind. It was the perfect kind of night for deer hunting in Illinois. I was hunting the stand that I'd recently hung and I was happy to see that in my absence there had been a rub and a scrape made right around this stand. About an hour after I got into the stand, I saw some deer activity across the creek, but they were well out of range of my recurve. Now, I haven't had much time to practice with my recurve lately because I've spent most of my time hunting. And so I figured that I would limit my shots to shots that I couldn't possibly miss if a deer came within that range. Of course, I didn't expect to have an opportunity at any of these deer because they simply were well out of range. But then I got really excited because a deer was coming across the creek and I got into position and I got my cameras on and ready. And everything was so perfect as this button buck stepped into range and then turned broadside at 10 yards and then I fucked up. How? I don't know. But I managed to miss a 10 yard broadside shot. It seems that the gods of the hunt hate me because everything felt so absolutely perfect in that shot that I thought I was going to break the whitetail curse clean arrow. But we don't rise to our level of training, we fall to our level of mastery. And when an animal is in front of you with a traditional bow in your hand, you forget everything you thought you once knew. And that's just the way it is. So I'm going to have to make sure that I dedicate more time to practice than simply sitting in a stand because shooting like that won't break the whitetail curse and I'm just thankful that it was a clean miss. My only guess is that when I shot last night, I hit my sleeve. Beyond that, I don't have a clue. They say lightning never strikes twice, but it's a high-stakes game of whack-a-mole when it comes to deer stand hunting. So you got to be in the right place at the right time, and in spite of the fact that I screwed up there at the tail end of it, 
I was practically amazed at how well my ambush plan had worked out for being able to figure out where the deer would organically move to place my stand where it needed to be. Now, as I said, lightning never strikes twice, but I figured it couldn't hurt to come back to this stand because on my way past this stand to another stand, I saw that there had been a fresh scrape right in front of my stand and they would started a rub line right behind my stand so I figured what the hell might as well climb up in this one and give it a shot see if a buck chases a doe through here because the rut could be kicking in any day now. It was a cold night and everything was so absolutely perfect but the fact that I had missed again was heavy on my mind. There was a cold burn in my fingertips, and so eventually I had to put on my winter hunting gloves. And nothing showed up, which isn't a surprise, because the surprise is when something actually does show up. It's getting colder, and that means that the rut should be heating up here pretty soon. There's scrapes and rubs everywhere, and we'll just have to see how the rest of this season turns out. No kill with sticks. Of course, I don't know what excuse I could give for missing a shot that I should be able to make with my eyes closed, other than hashtag trad life. Of course, I'm kind of glad that I did miss because it was a button buck. I'm glad that it wasn't a big buck that I missed. And the same people that would bitch and moan about me missing a shot that I should be able to make with my damn eyes closed are also the same people that would bitch and moan about quality deer management and belittle my accomplishment for shooting a button buck instead of a regular doe or a big buck. So, here's for you. And when you get a deer in front of you, you're operating on lizard brain. You do not rise to your level of training. You fall to your level of mastery. And the fact is, I screwed up. If I can screw up, that means that you can screw up too. So making sure that the animals are close is really important. So there's an object lesson in this. Again, I'm just glad that I missed clean. Now, of course, I open myself up to criticism because I deal in reality. I bring you the reality of my archery season, the way that it goes down, exactly how it happens, one, I'm honest, and two, I don't have the ability to make myself look any cooler than what I am. That's just the facts. So, I open myself up to the criticism simply because I live on film, I live on social media, life ain't like the pornos, hunting ain't like the TV shows, but it's getting colder, the rut should be kicking in, there's plenty of season left to go, and I had a reality check on my skill level for sure. So, as always, God bless all my sports of America. Join the NRA to protect your rights. Please scout my friends over to 3 riversarchery.com. Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement and those of you serving in the military. And thanks for watching. Text, subscribe, and your outdoors.